Yeah, I would say that it's inevitable that, you know, whatever life experience you have will influence you. So I guess everything I do comes into my work somehow. And the, like, the, the kind of films I like are very personal in the first place. And so I think inevitably, you know, whatever it is I do, you know, writing or whatever comes into my work. So, yeah, like my my first short film that I made last year, it has an element of music in it. And I played the viola for 10 years and I just love music in general. And that just, you know, it just kind of happened. Like I didn't think about it consciously. It just came into my work. And then, yeah, I guess, you know, when I, you know, when I started being a film critic, I didn't really know if I wanted to make films eventually, but now that I do make them, I don't forget about the film criticism work. It's still, it's still part of me and it influences me. It makes me think about films in a certain way, I guess. I mean, the reason why I focus on performance so much is because in a very basic way, if you want, the first thing you see when you watch a film, I think, is the actors, you know, it's what they're doing. Or at least for me, that's the case. And I think, especially when I was studying film um, and doing film criticism work, I think like the way people talk about actors is often quite limited. They just talk about charisma, but there's not much talk about what they're actually doing, the actual technique of it. And even in today's cinema, I think it's, it's, it's complicated and I'm sure it's always been like that, but there are certain actors that are, you know, are used differently. Like looks are important because you're a face, so we can't get around that. And sometimes an actor will be used for the way they look and that's completely valid. But sometimes an actor will go against expectations with their looks and all of that. And to me, that's super interesting. And I think in today's cinema, it's still, uh, it's definitely a thing. Like, it's still used in a complex, interesting fashion. But, you know, we've, especially if we look at Hollywood, it's still very, you know, glamorous. Like, it's all about being glamorous. And to me, that's not interesting. <laughs> like, to me, actors are interesting when they, they are vulnerable. And, you know, walking the red carpet, looking amazing, is not really the most vulnerable thing you could do. Like, obviously you're exposed, but you're at your best. And yeah, I think the, the best actors we all love today, even, you know, American actors, is because they have the ability to be vulnerable and they, they, that's why they do it. Like, they love that. They're not there to be pretty, basically. You know, even someone as gorgeous as Kate Blanchett, like, she loves to be messy on screen and to me that's the whole point or you know Isabelle Huppert or Joaquin Phoenix as well they, they love to you know go against what we expect you know a glamorous person to be and and to me that's that's crucial and I like when when I talk about performance I like looking at the detail because I think acting is a craft for a reason you know some people are gifted and that's like everything else but it takes work as well. It takes, uh, it takes work to get to a place where you can be vulnerable and not just vulnerable for the sake of being vulnerable, but also f to make art and to make something that people can relate to. So I like, you know, paying attention to that in a way that goes beyond, you know, oh, they're beautiful or wow, they were really impressive, you know, crying on screen. Like there's always more to it than that, I think. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, <laughs> the toughest for me is producing because it's obviously it's crucial. And if you make independent cinema, you always have to do a bit of producing. But to me, like I didn't, you know, I didn't fall in love with movies because I love producing. Like it's like it's kind of an unnecessary, like a necessary evil to me. It's something you have to get through. Luckily, I have uh, people around me who really help me with all that, uh, including my, my partner with whom I founded a production company. Uh, it's called Ça Existe Productions, which means it exists productions in French. And he's got more of an eye for that stuff, but even him uh, now, he's leaning more towards writing and directing because we both love that more than, than producing. <laughs> and. Uh, but I do love acting so much because in a way I find that acting can be like directing from within the scene. And it's also just extremely fun. Like it's just the most liberating thing you could do. It's, it's just in a way that directing can't always be because you have so much to do and a lot of responsibilities. But yeah, acting is a probably, it's probably going to be always the fun, the most fun thing 
of all those. Well, film criticism was basically the way I got into films in the first place. <clears throat> Because I didn't, I didn't really grow up watching a lot of films like a lot of people who, who are in films now. Um, I, got, I kind of got into films around 17, 18 properly. And then after high school, when I needed to decide what to do studies wise, um, I kind of was like, okay, I'll do film because I like movies. And that's when I discovered that, oh, there's a whole career and you know, industry around writing about films which I was surprised by. <laughs> I thought like, you know, it's just, you, you watch it and that's it. But um, yeah, at, at film, when I studied film studies, I discovered this industry and, but not just, you know, oh, you can make money for that. Cause obviously you can't make a lot of money for that, but you can, you know, you can find a community of people who love film and will talk about one film for three hours, you know, if they want to. And that's me, like I, I could do that every day. And it was, just such a blessing to find that there are people like me out there and also people who really want to think deeply about cinema and if, and the problem with the word criticism is that people think it's a bad thing like they think it means you you're judging you're being judgmental in a bad way but criticism just means having a critical ability like critical thinking to be able to, to look at something and, and have an opinion and look at what's working, what's not working in a way that can elevate the work. You know, you can, you know, if you, if you criticize a David Lynch movie, there's a lot to say. <laughs> and it will, it will always be personal to you because like actors, you're still yourself, but you can push for greater understanding, greater inspiration. Like to me, the, the best way to use film criticism is to use it to inspire people to inspire them to watch the film, to inspire them to, yeah, to take a chance on the film because a lot of films, unless they are blockbusters, you know, most people are like, well, why would I spend any money on this? Why would I spend two hours of my time? I need to be inspired. And to me, that's what film criticism is. It's not just sharing an opinion. It's not just saying yes or no to a film. It's really opening a door to people and being like, look, this film is interesting for these reasons. Maybe it's not completely successful, but it's maybe worth seeing. So, yeah. I mean, so when I'm writing, the most difficult thing is always starting the piece. Like writing the first sentence is always a nightmare, but I think that's the same for every writer of any kind. Um, I guess what's, challenging is sometimes for certain works you know you need a bit of context sometimes or actually you don't need it but it might really help to have some context so if I watch a film from some country I've never been to you know I can take it for what it is and have an opinion but probably if I had more context it would resonate differently but that's why you know that's why we try to have writers who know about a certain context to write about certain films because they have more to give. They have more background knowledge that could be helpful. But it's also at the same time super interesting to come at a film with no idea what's going on and have an opinion. Like that's, when I started writing film criticism, like I said, I, hadn't, I wasn't like a massive cinephile. I hadn't seen that much, but I was extremely curious about every, every film possible. I was just so devoted to seeing things and having an idea about them that I think some some editors liked that because they were like oh you, you don't necessarily have a ton of knowledge but you're very curious and you will like really go deep on a film even if you know you, you don't have a context for it so yeah it's challenging but it's also sometimes it can be a, a good good thing Well, I think the 80s uh, in general was fascinating for all the excess of it. Like the, um, you know, whether you look at films or, you know, just politics, it was a crazy time, especially Hollywood films. Um, but yeah, I think it was a time when people were trying to be, to express themselves a lot, like loudly, <laughs> you know, there were less uh, restrictions, but at the same time, there was a lot of tension, you know, with politically with the AIDS crisis and all these things that I think came to like really shake people uh, profoundly. So I think the cinema reflected that and 
I'm guessing maybe you're talking about the films of Brian De Palma uh, or erotic thrillers of the 80s, which to me are fascinating because, you know, even when they try to make erotic thrillers now, it just doesn't make any sense or it makes a different sense. It's not the same. <laughs> Whereas in the 80s, there was so much uh, confusion around feminism and sexual liberation and, and uh, capitalism that it made for those insane films that just are honestly ridiculous, but so exciting. And, and they're exciting because they show you that films can be really extreme and ridiculous, but also extremely engaging. Like something like Basic Instinct is, is insane, but it's, it's just cool to, to know that films can do that, you know? Like, it was a time when people were experimenting a lot, I think. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, actually, you know, spending time here and watching short films, obviously they're shorter than feature films, and, but it's, it's interesting how, I think our brains are trained for a certain length of films, you know, I'm, I'm used to watching features more, but actually the shorter form is extremely exciting because you have less time to, to do a lot. Or my, my favorite shorts are kind of shorts that will just spark an idea and then they end and you're left with this potential, you know. So it's, it's interesting how that works. And then you have, you know, obviously super long films, which are more about usually like building a, a whole universe and letting you disappear into it. And then coming out of it is like <laughs> shocking and strange. Um, but yeah, runtime, it's, it's a tool. It's something to use to, to change the story. I mean, I'm guessing if you told the same story in five minutes or in two hours, you could do that. You would have different elements to it and it would, you know, maybe one would not be better than the other. They would just be different. And I think a lot of films, feature films, need to be shorter. <laughs> so I'm all up for that. <laughs>